Good morning, everyone. Look what I'm going to do today. Someone asked me if I would make a chicken or a chicken base mixture for you guys. Now, it's not the lightest color, but the flavors are really, really good. I actually, uh, you could actually put a tablespoon of this in some water and just drink it if you're feeling a little under the weather. It really, really is nice in flavor. Like I said, it's not as light as if you would buy a chicken base product that you buy at the store. Uh, being that we're vegan, it's hard to find anything that has a chicken base. But I find this is the closest that I got to a full chicken base that you could actually put in soups. Or if you're making some of my um, some of my meats, I do use this in some of my recipes. So here is how easy it is to make this. Now I put it in this container because I thought maybe I wanted to blend it up in my Nutribullet, but I didn't have to. Now there's the color. And since we don't have that chicken fat that gives us that yellow color in the soup base, uh, I basically use turmeric to give me that yellow color. But you really need a little because turmeric will pick up, uh, not pick up, turmeric will take over if, uh, if you're not okay with it. So we're going to use very little. But this is one batch. Now the recipe that I'm going to make for you today, this is the one batch. And this can last you quite a bit. I'm not going to make it over salty. Uh, because you could always, if you're making soup, you could always add extra salt. So there is some salt in here. But I'm not going to make it that there's so much sodium that uh, you're afraid to even put this in your mouth. So there is some sodium. You can now either make this fat free or you can make it with a little bit of fat. Uh, it's up to you. I did add uh, some olive oil to this, but you don't have to. You could leave it just completely dry. And then if you're making a soup, you could always add the olive oil to, um, to your soup. So I'm just going to take a nice little bowl rather than using this. And I'm going to have to find a jar to put this in because I'm going to have a big batch. When I'm finished with the one I tried and I wrote down the recipe and the one I'm going to be making today, I'm going to have a huge amount of uh, chicken base for soups and for uh, meat making, believe it or not. So I don't mind because I do use a lot of it. And... Um, it's just great to have in the storage area so when you need it, you don't have to run out and get it. So, And it's not that hard to make either. Now, there, there might be a few ingredients that you, might, that you might need to go out and get. Or maybe there's a few things that we can substitute. So we'll see what we could do as we're making this, uh, this chicken base. So I'm just going to... We're going to use this so you can actually see the colors go in. Now, it's not going to be in any specific order... And jot it down. And then I even had Mikey taste it, laugh out loud. I call my husband Mikey because he's always tasting my uh, uh, the stuff I make. And if he tells me it's good, I know it's pretty good. It might not be perfect, but it's pretty good. So I'll tell you what we're going to need. We're going to start off. Okay, I need my measuring spoons. And it really is simple. It's not that hard to make. Like I said, this is no specific order. I'm just going to, I have it all written down on my paper here. But I'm going to explain why I use certain things and what you can use maybe to replace it if you don't have it. But, you know, coming from uh, a home where my mom used a lot of spices and herbs in her food. And basically that's what really makes our food. It's not the, uh, I remember... Uh, you know, when we were making chicken. And that chicken really smelled gnarly. I'm sorry. Today, if I would have to make that, I'd probably gag. But that chicken was horrible. It smelled like... It just smelled nasty. But yet, when we started to add all the spices, and we started to add all the herbs, that chicken finally started to be pleasant enough for you, for you to eat. We would squeeze lemon on it. We would add um, spices and herbs and garlic. And then we would cook it. And finally that, t that chicken tastes good. But if you would just 
smell that chicken out of that package and not just chicken even the beef it was really disgusting so we're gonna start off with some salt now like I said I'm not gonna put a lot of salt um, here we go we're gonna need two tablespoons of salt now you're gonna say oh my god two tablespoons of salt that's a lot of salt well really it's not a lot of salt and I'll tell you why because you're not gonna put all that chicken base in your food you're just gonna use a little bit plus there's so little and this salt is gonna preserve everything together so nothing's gonna go bad on you that chicken base can stick around for a long time uh, if you don't put the oil if you put the oil you might uh, it might harden up on you if you um, if you do put the oil I just wanted to test to see what because if you buy okay I'm all over the place when I'm talking if you buy um, a chicken base there's a lot of fat in it okay now we don't buy chicken base base but I do buy um, a full chicken uh, a full chicken uh, base and I find that because they add fats to it uh, if you don't use it fast enough the fats will it will turn into almost like a brick I mean I still use it I chop away at it and I use what I need I won't throw it away but if you're afraid that maybe uh, this might uh, firm up on you don't put the oil it's just nice that when if you're making a cup of uh, say a cup of chicken broth or chicken broth and you take a tablespoon of this and you put that in your water or in your cup and you see the little fat balls on top it just kind of resembles that old-fashioned chicken soup your mom used to make but you don't have to put the oil in so and again two tablespoons of salt seems like a lot but it really isn't okay so we have our salt we're gonna need and I'm trying to do this and clear it off at the same time my counter if I could only show you what it looks like on the side you, you, you'd be scared because there's a lot of ingredients that goes to make this okay so salt is gone we're gonna need five to six tablespoons of nutritional yeast we've got one two three notice mine are never really level four five okay I'm gonna put five for now and now that's gonna help give it that yellow color and you're gonna say oh my god nutritional yeast tastes like cheese how is that gonna taste like chicken well don't ask me how it does like my daughter calls me the kitchen witch it just does okay we're gonna need turmeric now remember the turmeric we do not want to use a lot of turmeric because turmeric will take over so you're gonna put a half or a quarter and this year I will make it level so I'm gonna put a quarter and a quarter will make a half that's as much as I'm gonna use in this recipe but if you're afraid it might um, taste too much like turmeric put a quarter mix everything up after you put all the other ingredients together and just wet your finger just tap the top of your spices taste it see how you like it or just put a little bit in some water um, drink it and see how you like it if you find that it's uh, not enough turmeric or you could use a little more turmeric then go ahead and put another quarter teaspoon or maybe even less if you want to remember it has nothing to do with the color it might not have the color of the uh, chicken base but it sure has a nice flavor that resembles the chicken uh, flavor that people were accustomed to so I put a half teaspoon of my turmeric and I'm gonna push that aside and here we go we're gonna put a little bit of paprika like I said this recipe is all over the place when I write it down for you it's gonna be written down on this side possible also on this side so I'm gonna put this dish right in the middle so you'll have the writing on this side and this side and you're gonna have all the ingredients so we're gonna put a little bit of paprika here we go and we need only a half a teaspoon of paprika I mean you could put more but you don't want your stock to be uh, turning red on you you just want flavors you don't want it to turn red so here's a half paprika my pantry is loaded with 
every spice you could imagine or you know what I'm probably missing some but I will make sure to load my pantry with even more if I'm missing I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna put it in there because you really need spices in your life it really makes a difference to you know when you're cooking so we're going to need onion powder. So you could either use onion salt powder or you could use onion powder alone. Because remember, if you're adding more salt to, uh, to this mixture, when you put a little bit of this in some water when making soup, you're really not going to have that much salt. You're probably going to have to add more salt to your soup unless you're just eating no salts whatsoever. Then I recommend don't put salts in your mixture. So, like I said, if you don't want to put salt, do not put salts if you can't eat salt. But if you're okay with salts, getting onion powder with salt is not going to kill you. Mine doesn't have it, but if you do find onion powder with just salt and you can't find the one without the salt, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and use it because you're really not going to have that much salt. One teaspoon of onion powder. Now, I was talking to my sister yesterday when I was trying to create this recipe. She goes, you know, I think there's extra onion powder. I just put one, but if you want to, you know what, maybe this batch, I'm going to put another half. Because she says to me, there's a lot of onion in a soup base, in a chicken soup base. So here we go. It's going to be like one and a half. So I'm going to listen to what she had to say and see how this batch turns out. If I find it's not right, then I'll go back to my original that I wrote down. But if you're afraid, just put one for now and see where that takes you. I'm going to let you know once I'm done with this, what I think about the, the extra onion in it. So we check out the onion powder. Now, you need celery. Uh, you could get either celery salt or celery powder. If you don't have celery salt or celery powder or you can't find it, you can actually put cori uh, coriander powder. If you can't find celery salt or celery powder, you can use this as a replacement. Does it taste just like celery? No, but it has a resemblance of a celery taste. So I don't mind. That's all I do is put coriander or cilantro in my food. So I don't mind this in my mixture okay so now we have cloves now what's a good chicken soup without a little bit of cloves in it my mom used to always put a little bit of cloves in her chicken soup base here we go one eight you don't need a lot but do put some because it really adds a nice flavor to it nutmeg same thing you don't have to put nutmeg but my mom always did, so I am going to put nutmeg in mine. Here we go. A little bit, just to say it's in there. one eight teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff in this mixture. Okay. Yes, a little bit of thyme. Now, mine is homemade, but you could just buy some dry thyme. Um, if you don't have dry thyme, you would need three times the fresh to make um, to make the uh, tablespoon of what am I using am I using a tablespoon I don't even remember how much I put in here let me see where is my time here it is I put two teaspoons so you would need six teaspoon of fresh if you can't find uh, if you can't find the uh, the dry so here we go one Two, time. I could even put a little more time. It's not, uh, it's not bad if you add extra. Okay, so we did the time. I got to check off everything that I am using of you. Okay, remember that soy milk powder? Look how little I have. I got to go out and get some more. I bought this thinking that I'll be able to make soy milk for my daughter anytime she wants. When I went to make this into milk, it was just revolting. I thought I was going to die. It, had, it didn't taste nothing like the store-bought uh, organic soy milk that I buy. So I said to myself, what am I going to do with all this stuff? I accidentally threw some in some meat that I was making, and it was the best seitan I ever made. 
Now I need to go out and buy this stuff because if I want to make that seitan, I got to keep buying this. But I'm also going to put some in here. Believe it or not, yes, you do have milk, uh, milk products in chicken-based soup. And because we don't use regular milk, we will be using our soy milk. Now, if you don't have, you say, I don't have any soy milk powder. Can I use soy milk protein? Yes, go ahead. It's probably the same thing. So here we go. We've got one and a half tablespoons. And I'm sorry, whoever doesn't want to listen to me blabber on, I'm really sorry, but I try to do my best to explain to everybody why I cook a certain way or why I do it a certain way. This way you have an idea and you don't feel as lost. I remember in the beginning when I was trying to make seitan and I was like, oh my God, I says, how am I going to do this? I know my husband still wanted to eat meat, but I wanted to... Um, um, figure out how to make it. And nobody really told me why they did what they did. And my meat never came out right. But you know what? I'm going to explain to you why I do certain things. So this way, you know why we do it. And it's up to you after to either follow it that way or if you want to change it up yourself. And don't be afraid to change up the recipe. I mean, you know, you're the artist in your kitchen. Okay, so here we go. We did the soy milk. And, of course, you do need that in powder. And you need, uh, like I said, if you don't have the soy milk powder that I pick up, I'm sure you can use soy milk protein. So, I'm sure it's the same thing. I'm sure they just crushed those, so uh, those soy nuts and they made milk out of it. Um, so, do that. And maybe if you have coconut powder, maybe you could also use that as a replacement instead of soy. Um... But do you want your chicken soup to taste like coconut? I don't think so. So I would stick with the uh, with the soy. Yes, definitely stick with the soy. Okay. Um, mushroom powder. I will put a half a teaspoon. Not much, but I will put half a teaspoon. And here we go. This I will make level because I don't want to put too much. I don't want it to taste like just shiitake but a little bit is going to add some nice flavors to my broth you did the turmeric okay you did the coriander okay sugar guys chicken based soups have sugar now why do they put sugar they probably put sugar when you buy it so you get addicted to it um why am i putting sugar because if you want it to taste like the ones that you get at the store, you're going to need sugar. And if you think about it, when you're making a soup, you're not going to get that much going through your, uh, your broth. So I wouldn't worry about it. So I'm going to put two tablespoons of sugar. Here we go. And again, if you're afraid of putting that in, don't put it. It's really your, your base. You're the one who's making this. So if you're afraid of putting sugar, leave it out. Okay, we need some mustard, dry mustard. Now, I'm running out of dry mustard, so I hope I have enough in this container. But dry mustard can easily be made. If you have mustard seeds at home, you can easily make your dry mustard just by putting your mustard seeds through a mill. Okay, so I'm going to need half a teaspoon. I just have to find my teaspoon. Here it is. That's one. This is a half a teaspoon. And I've lost my pen. Let's hope I get enough out of this. Okay, my half doesn't fit, so I'll have to do two quarters to get my mustard. Here we go. One. And what is that? Ah. Here we go. One. Yeah, I'm going to have to make some mustard uh, powder. And that's two. And that's mustard powder. Maybe I'll put just a little more. There we go. And this way I can replenish this with the powder I'm going to make later on. Okay. Sage. We're going to put some sage. Now... If you're worried sage is going to overpower your stock, 
uh, don't put as much. Uh, I'm okay with sage, so I'm going to put a full teaspoon. But if you find that you can't handle too much sage, put only half. But I'm going to put a full teaspoon in mine. Ready? Parsley. Now, if you don't have parsley, uh, maybe you can get some uh, dry parsley. This is. Um, you can buy... Let me see. I put two, right? Okay. Uh, you can buy maybe um, an Italian mix where they have parsley, oregano, and some um, basil. Uh, you, can, uh, you can use that as a replacement. Or you could put two tablespoons of dry parsley. Okay. Are you ready for this, guys? Oh, did I put the garlic salt? No, I didn't put garlic salt. Here we go. I need... Two and a half teaspoon of garlic salt or garlic powder. That's one. And yours, let me see. Uh -huh. Just a little extra. It's not the end of the world. Here we go. And now for the last ingredient, believe it or not. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed. Have you ever smelled curry? What does curry smell like to you? Curry smells like chicken base to me. It really does. Now, if you're afraid and you say, I don't like curry. Now, you see, my husband doesn't eat curry. But you know what? He eats curry because I always put it in his food. And he has no idea. Now, if you're listening to this, Philip, I'm sorry. But you got to eat what I cook you. Here we go. One and a half teaspoons of curry. If you don't mind the curry and you want to you wanna add extra, go ahead, add extra. If you're afraid, like I said, if you're afraid of adding some of these ingredients into your base, always use less. Write down what you use less of and then mix everything up and give it a taste. If you don't taste the curry, say, you know what, maybe I'll put that little extra curry in it. Go ahead and put it. And if you find that it's perfect the way it is, the way you cut down your ingredients, that is perfect for you. It's perfect for me. Okay, am I missing anything? I don't think so. Yes, the olive oil. But I'm not going to put the olive oil. Because I'm going to make... This batch is going to be a dry batch. And there is your recipe on how to make... And look how much you get out of it. Just by adding a teaspoon of this and a teaspoon of that... You've got quite a bit of chicken stock. Like I said, it's not as yellow as the one that you would buy at the store. Oh, yes, I did forget something. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. Sorry. Soy lecithin. Now, where did I put mine? I have to still get it. Okay. If you don't have it, you don't have to put it in. Uh, this actually gives the um, gives it a nice buttery, fatty um, texture to your chicken base. Now, lecithin, if it, it's not vegan, it, okay, this one is vegan. But if you would get the ones that are not vegan, it's derived by eggs from eggs. But because we're using uh, a soy. Uh, a soy, you could get either soy or you could even get uh, sunflower. Uh, some people are afraid of soy, but I say if it's organic, it's okay. It really, you know, soy is so good for you. But do get organic because today everything is genetically modified. So uh, if you can't find soy, you could get sunflower. But what it actually does is it adds um, a very creamy, buttery, um, very, it's a fat, but it's a nice, creamy, buttery texture to it. So by adding this to your mixture, you're going to have a nice addition in flavor to your mixture. But if you don't have it, this mixture is going to be good even without it. You don't need to put it in there. Uh, you can just use the olive oil. I just like the taste of it because it has like almost a buttery uh, buttery taste to it and I use that when I make my butters fantastic 
But if you're afraid of soy, organic or non-organic, you could get um, you could get sunflower uh, less lecithin. I'm trying to pronounce it right, lecithin. And if you can't find it at all, just leave it out. Now look at the difference in color. How this is darker than this one, and that's only because I used. Um, I used olive oil in this one and this one I'm not going to put the olive oil I'm just gonna mix everything together now and there is my my mixture because I will be consuming this I'm I put this in my meats I put this in soups and it's really really good so if you can't find vegan chicken base here you go you just made yourself your own, just with some ingredients that you have at home. And if you don't have those ingredients and you have to go out and get them, go out and get them. Put them in your pantry so when you run out of this stuff, you could just make a new batch yourself. And there you go. You're done. So Carolyn, Carolyn R., this recipe is for you. And I hope you give it a try. And if you do, leave a comment. Tell me how you like it. And thank you guys. If you want to see more recipes like this, just give me a thumbs up right in the comment area and I'll get back to you and I'll see you in the next one.